I had heard about Palm and Abel by looking up what both the store and mission were on the Kennedy Center website. Before applying, I had called the store and spoke with one of the assistant managers. Since there was a job available, I had gone back on the site, applied for the job, and was very lucky to get the position. This is my first job, especially in retail, and I love what I do. I have been looking for employment for many years and am thrilled to have finally found Palm and Abel. I enjoy being able to meet new people and assisting customers, making it a pleasant experience for all and hope that they'd like to return. I also like to work with the assistant managers and my boss to help with whatever tasks are needed in the store. My dream job is to work in the theater business one day, whether it be on stage as an actor, backstage as an assistant, or whatever jobs are available. The sky's the limit. Don't let people tell you what you can and cannot do. Do not deny yourself due to having a disability. Keep working hard enough to go for your dreams and good things will come. Welcome everybody. I'm Teresa Thomason. And I'm John Jones. And we are delighted to welcome you to the 56th annual Kennedy Center Four Seasons Ball, an evening of gratitude. This is the live stream you've all been waiting for. And you know, I've never done this before. I don't know if my co-host has, but we are coming to you from the beautiful new Palm and Abel, the resale store, right here in Shelton, Connecticut. Uh, John, you know, I'm looking at you. You look fantastic. Have you been shopping here? Well, yes, I have, Teresa. Well, <laughs> I see something brand new on you. Are, are, are those comfortable? They seem to fit perfect. They are. They're very comfortable. You've got to come check this store out, ladies and gentlemen. You won't get the full scope until you walk through those doors. You know, we have so much still to celebrate. Uh, we've gone through so much together. We're so thrilled you could join us tonight, folks. Not only is this a celebration, but it's a fundraiser. And we couldn't be doing this without your help. Our sponsors for this evening, Platinum, the Ben O. Larson Foundation, People's United Bank, Bill and Gloria Paul, the Makata family, and our Sapphire sponsors are the Foley family, Fifth Third Bank, the Evanson family, and the Horton family. And I have the Emerald sponsors who are Union Savings Bank, the Denon family, and the Sebastians. I also have the Ruby sponsors who are Bigelow T, Capitol Hill Group, LLC, the Schuster Group, the Gavey family, the Walsh family, Merit Insurance, R.D. Sinto Incorporated, Rubenstein Partners, and the Tarion Group LLC, DBA Pillar to Post. With this generous support, the Kennedy Center has empowered over 2,000 people with disabilities wow. and special needs every year. In fact, the center was built on a legacy of trailblazers, and tonight we're here to honor those legacies and create opportunities as well as fulfilled dreams for all people with disabilities. That is what we're here to do, John. And folks, I don't have to tell you, I don't have to stress how COVID-19 has turned our world upside down, but we refuse to let it close us down or keep us apart. So get ready. We've got a great show lined up for you tonight. A fabulous evening, actually one hour of power to honor the commitment of our Kennedy Center community, to share some real heartwarming stories, and check this out. Is everyone seeing this? You'll have a chance to win this incredible wine chest with 45 bottles of wine, hello. And John, tell them about the grand prize. Our grand prize is this Mix Fitness Plus. Ooh. It's a total fitness system for your mind and body. We have a silent auction, and you can donate throughout the evening by pressing the button on your phone. 
In addition to that, they're wonderful prizes, our silent auction. We'll hear from Rick Sebastian, our CEO of the Kennedy Center. We'll be entertained by my co-host, okay. Teresa, and the KC Trio. Wow. We'll also hear from a community of people who make the Kennedy Center the special place that it is. Every year we begin the ball with a cocktail. Ooh. This year is no different. Now that's a tasty way to start this celebration. We're going to bring you Justin Pasha of the Cup Bearer. He's going to guide us on how to make our two signature delicious cocktails tonight. I hope you're ready. Mule for a mission and cup for a cause. So all of you who have your recipes, get ready. It's time, John. Let's, Let's get, get this, this party, party started. started. Hey everybody, Pasha here, owner and founder of The Cup Bear. I'm here today in honor of the Kennedy Center and the Four Seasons Ball to bring you some delicious seasonal cocktails. We're gonna walk you through these cocktails step by step and ingredient by ingredient so that you can follow along at home and be drinking in style with the rest of us. So our first cocktail today is gonna be what I like to call the Autumn Mule. So this is very much your classic Autumn Mule with just a few twists, um, super delicious. The base alcohol today, we're gonna be using Fifth State Vodka. They've generously donated. Um, and uh, yeah, let's get right into it. So first things first, whenever we're making a cocktail, we're gonna add our non-alcoholic ingredients first. I'm gonna make this cocktail directly in the vessel it's going in. So we're not gonna shake it, we're not gonna do any of that. We're just gonna make it right into the mule mug. First ingredient is gonna be Cinnamon Simple Syrup. Now, Simple Syrup is, as the name suggests, very easy to make. Um, it is essentially equal parts sugar and warm water. Dissolve the sugar in the water, and then you have your Simple Syrup. To make Cinnamon Simple Syrup, just take that and drop a couple of cinnamon sticks in there. In about a day or so, you'll have a nice infusion. So, that's what we've done, and we're going to add, using a jigger, which is a measuring tool. If you don't have a jigger at home, you can use a teaspoon. Uh, we're gonna add half of an ounce of this cinnamon simple syrup directly into the meal mug. All right. Next, what I wanna do is I wanna take a lime wedge and I'm gonna pinch it in there, squeeze it in, and then I'm gonna drop it right in and I'm gonna do the same thing with another one. So two lime wedges, squeezed and dropped right into the cup. All right. Next, we'll add our vodka. We're using fifth state here and that's a two ounce pour. So. Measuring our vodka out and pouring it directly into the cup. Right. Next, what we'll do is add some ginger beer. So we have uh, a bottle of ginger beer here. We're gonna pour, I wanna say about four ounces. That's perfect. Don't fill it too much, because now we're gonna add the ice. And we'll top it off in a second with more ginger beer if needed. Fill our cup here with some ice. And then take a spoon, just give it a stir, and so all those ingredients. You notice I add the ice second, I do this so that the action of adding the ice can help to stir the drink. Okay. Top it off with a little bit more ginger beer, perfect. And then lastly, we're gonna garnish it with a cinnamon stick. Stir your cinnamon stick, beautiful, strong, and that is the Autumn Mule. Beautiful, delicious cocktail to take you into the cooler season. All right, so for this next cocktail, we're gonna be serving it hot and we'll be making it with some Fifth State Maple Whiskey. This is a cocktail that we call the uh, Pumpkin Toddy. We're gonna be using a little bit of Bigelow Pumpkin Spice Tea We've already got that steeping and hotly brewed right here. A little bit of honey and uh, some lemon when we get to it. First thing, we're gonna add about a tablespoon of this delicious clover honey to our mug, all right? We're just gonna let that sit in the base of the cup for now. So, next, we'll add our whiskey. It's gonna be two ounces of this Fifth State Maple Whiskey. Alright, measuring it again with our measuring tool. Perfect. And then we're gonna top it right to the drinking line with 
some hot pumpkin spice tea. Stir it up. Dissolve that honey nicely. This is a delicious hot cocktail. That flavors of the maple and the pumpkin spice together and then honey. Whiskey loves honey. Really come together beautifully. And then what we'll do is we'll garnish it with just a thin slice of lemon. All right. Break up that acidity nicely. And that is a cocktail that couldn't be easier, couldn't be more delicious and warming. As you know, the weather gets colder and you're sitting by the fire with one of these, a pumpkin toddy, forget about it. It's beautiful and uh, simple. Cheers. And cheers to all of you for your gracious support and commitment to the Kennedy Center. Clink. Cheers to you, John. Thank you for tuning in. So, Teresa, I have a mocktail called Cup for a Cause made with delicious Bigelow tea. Yummy. What are you drinking? I am drinking a mule with Fifth State vodka, and it is now on my Christmas list. Let me tell you, this is fun. <laughs> delicious. Let me put this down because there's something I want to share with you. In March, COVID-19 presented us with challenges and opportunities that were beyond our imagination. And the challenges were and continue to be 24-7. So I, I'd like you to take a look at this highlight. You'll get to meet some of the amazing members of our Kennedy Center family, Emily, Brendan, and Dot and Gil Kellersman. My name is Brendan Wendt. I have been with the Kennedy Center now since 2014. I am currently a job coach. And right now I'm basically going wherever they need me for support and employment. I'm Emily Valentine and I've been with the Kennedy Center for almost four years now. I am an expressive arts facilitator at the Maggie Daly Arts Cooperative, otherwise known as MDAC. I heard that there was nothing going on for support and employment for the foreseeable future. And I thought I wanted to be out there actually helping with something. I figured I didn't get in this job to sit on the sidelines and watch the world burn. I want to do something about it. I got a call saying that they needed some help in some of the group homes. I also volunteered to work at the group homes and I got uh, th my first shift working at the group home, I was first at a hilltop and they needed some coverage at, a, at another house and that house turned out to be COVID positive. So it was unnerving, but we thought eh, maybe it's just the one. We, st we still did all our PPE and did everything as we were supposed to do. But it, it was spread. It's, yeah. It spread very quickly, um, and with it, within that first week, I think it was five out of six of the individuals living there were positive with coronavirus. And so they made the decision to move us to another location, um, I guess so they could keep the house clean and keep everyone isolated. After the two weeks, we were able to move them back into the group home. However, within the, that next week, people were getting released from the hospital and there are still two individuals who had, were still testing positive, but no longer showing symptoms. So they needed to be separated from everyone else. So it was back into that day program. This time it was set up with hospital beds and... This is when it got crazy. This was when it got crazy. They only had uh, three of us working there. It was me, Brendan, and one other staff. It was 12 hours, 16 hours, 17 and a half hours. Yeah. Was... Back to back to back. It was... Exhausting. Every bit is exhausting. It was so imagine. exhausting because it was two individuals that were pretty high needs and um, 
and they, they required a lot of attention and we were there by ourselves. It was never more than one staff there at a time and we were alone. It was the smallest things that like made me keep going. Um, when one of the individuals would just smile and laugh, that reminded me of why I was doing this because I was exhausted most of the time and had no idea why I was doing it. But to see people be happy and kind of starting to thrive a little bit, I mean, it, it, there was a mix of emotions because there was a lot of tears there. They wanted to go home. We wanted to go home. Everyone just wanted to go home but once once in a while we would get them laughing and that just made everything worthwhile just seeing the seeing that these guys were getting better knowing they had tested negative knowing they were getting back home and knowing that they were all set I mean, yeah really. that was very rewarding like just seeing them driving off in that van and saying goodbye hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and getting to see their regular staff for the first time in forever I'm Dottie Kellersman, and this is my husband. Gil Kellersman, and we have a daughter, Lisa Kellersman, who's 47 years old. Um, Lisa's been with the Kennedy Center now for 27 years. Most recently, the last six years, she's been in a Kennedy Center group home called The Farm in Drumble. Her experience in the home has been very, uh, very positive. Uh, she has three great uh, housemates. Um, the staff have been wonderful with her. Uh, they really treat her uh, and um, the three housemates, uh, Daryl, Ron, and Ross, as their own family. Lisa had ex uh, extreme uh, behavioral issues, very aggressive behavior, which was completely unpredictable. Um, you could be blindsided. You would never know when she was going to have these issues. Even within the Kennedy Center, they've had the same experiences. So it was very important for us at our stage in life to be able to get her uh, into a group home um, and it's actually been much more beneficial for her. She's much happier in the group home than she even was at, at being at the house. And then March 2020 arrived and we, we got the phone call. Um, we had many phone calls before from other agencies and it was always to come and take Lisa home. But this one was a little different. This one was, we now were in a pandemic and do we had about 24 hours to make a decision to either bring Lisa home to our house or to leave her at Daniel's farm uh, with the staff. It, it was a very difficult decision um, because you want to be the one who's the one who's going to take care of your child. I don't care how old that person is. They were so supportive of us because we felt like we were almost abandoning her and um, but they walked us through the process and it turned out that it became the best decision, one of the best decisions we have made for Lisa. She's grown, I think, a little bit more independent. Not to say they haven't had problems over these past seven months, but um, she's, she's really stepped up and she's, she's been really working very hard. And that all really has to do with the manager of the house uh, and all the staff. No matter what happens to Gil and I down the road, we know that Lisa is going to be safe, happy, and have a real family at the Kennedy Center group home. Um, and that's a, comforting, that's a comforting fact. It's amazing that something like this pandemic kind of made us realize that. Whoa, those are true heroes. You know, that is the very definition of essential worker and the challenges that they face. You know, that story really captures the care, commitment, and dedication of the Kennedy Center family. And now, it's my very special privilege to introduce to you all the Kennedy Center's CEO, Rick Sebastian. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, John. Good evening, everyone. I'll also extend my thanks for your participation. To say that 2020 has been a, an interesting year would be a major understatement. Today we had the call of our next President of the United States. Congratulations to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. 
uh, to be the next leaders of our administration and of our, of our wonderful country. 2020 has been filled here at the Kennedy Center with joy. It's been filled with sadness. It's been filled with tragedy. It's been filled with trauma. And as you've just seen, it's also been filled with unbelievable inspiration. People who touch each other every day and people who move us and leave us inspired to be better people ourselves. I want to thank our Kennedy Center employees for being the resilient group of human beings that they are and ensuring that people with disabilities have the ability to thrive in their communities. Two years ago, at this particular event, uh, we celebrated what was then the 54th anniversary of the Four Seasons Ball. Last year was the 55th Emerald anniversary and today the 56th anniversary. This Four Seasons Ball all began with the vision and the inspiration of a woman, Dorothy Larson. Dottie, unfortunately, has passed away recently, and our thoughts and prayers and our hearts go out to her family. As many of you know, Dottie made a lasting impact here in Fairfield County and beyond. She touched tens of thousands of lives with her philanthropic efforts. She touched all of the lives here at the Kennedy Center and has made us better people and better serving uh, people with disabilities by her dedication and her thoughtfulness and her love and admiration for the people that we're supporting every day. We also know that many of our employees have lost family members due to COVID this year. Kennedy Center experienced about 20 of our employees who have had COVID themselves, actually about 25 who have had COVID themselves and 20 of those have lost family members. We're up to about 16 of the individuals that we support testing positive for COVID, and three, unfortunately, of the people that we support have passed away this year. One of the, one of the outcomes of COVID that is not sad, that is not filled with tragedy, is how we have responded in much the same way that Evelyn Kennedy, our founder, in much the same way that Dottie Larson and Mary Faust responded 70 years ago to creating opportunities for people who have disabilities to make a difference in their communities and to also have an economic impact. COVID has brought us to a place where we're standing here at the Palm and Abel retail store that we shared with you last year at this very ball. In that year, since the Four Seasons Ball last year, we have created 15 new jobs in our social enterprises. Those new jobs are creating income for those people, for those employees with and without disabilities of about $250,000. In the two years since we began investing in our social enterprises, we've created 23 jobs for a total of $550,000. COVID also created an opportunity for us in 2020 to enter the world of PPE or personal protective equipment. When we couldn't find and locate our own PPE for Brendan and Emily that you've just seen, we created a relationship with a woman-owned small business who linked us with international manufacturers and national manufacturers to provide personal protective equipment here in Connecticut. Today, we have more than 1,800 Connecticut-based customers who rely on us for their PPE. We've won several large federal and state contracts. We've created employment for seven additional people in a distribution operation. Just recently on October 1st, we opened up a distribution center in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and we're distributing goods across the country and to the Pacific Islands and Puerto Rico and Guam. We look forward to the continued investments that you've created for us in, 50, in 56 years. We look forward to your investment tonight. We look forward to your ongoing contribution so that we can create even more employment opportunities. We can create even more opportunities for people to live and to fulfill their dreams. And we ask that you look at your telephone, you look at your text messaging, and you will see how to make contributions. I'm hoping that most of you have already gone through our, our items on the silent auction, and you'll see on the silent auction various icons where you can make contributions that will make a difference in how we hire individuals with disabilities, that we can buy equipment to make their work even better and more efficient, that we can create this, lo this long-term promise that Evelyn and Dottie created for us 70 years ago. 
Most of you have heard me say in the three years that I've been here at the Kennedy Center that we have an obligation when we're touched, moved, and inspired by the things that we witness on a day-to-day -day basis, we have an obligation to touch, move, and inspire others. And so much like COVID has changed our entire dialogue in our community, and as Teresa said at the beginning of tonight's event, that the world is turned upside down, we are touched, moved, and inspired, and we get to change too much information and have TMI now continue to mean touch, move, and inspire. Thank you for helping us to create opportunities. Thank you for ensuring that we have the promises that we'll continue to make for people 70 years from now that will still know the impact of the Kennedy Center. I appreciate your ongoing support. Once again, I thank the Kennedy Center employee base. I thank our donor base and certainly thank all of the sponsors that ensure that we have the ability to continue to thrive every day. Enjoy the rest of the evening and absolutely enjoy the food that was created by our social enterprise soups and such and the drinks that we just learned how to make. It is now my pleasure and my honor to introduce you to Devin and Jonah, two individuals who have clearly helped us transition and move into a full supply chain and warehousing and distribution operation. Enjoy meeting Devin and Jonah. Hi, my name is Devin Ramsey and I'm the warehouse and distribution supervisor here at the Kennedy Center. I'm here with my warehouse clerk, Jonah. Hi, my name is Jonah and I work at Kennedy Center Palm and Abel as a warehouse clerk distribution center. So about a month into COVID, we were still trying to figure out how to provide limited day services and we ran into a serious problem of a lack of masks and a lack of other PPE products. And at that time, our CEO, Rick, was able to secure a large supply of medical masks that we couldn't find anywhere else. One thing led to the next, and we have a PPE website that contains anything that you can need to protect yourself against COVID-19. So after about Two months of distributing the PPE through our e-commerce portal on Shopify, we received a contract with the State of Connecticut Department of Developmental Services. That contract consists of sending out 2,000 packages a week. About the time that we got our DSS contract, a lot of other businesses and jobs were closing down. They were sending their employees home. They were telling them they had to work from home. And one of the things that I was missing the most about my old job at that time was working with the people that we support. And Jonah, before coming to Palm Enable, was working at the Trumbull Senior Citizen Center, which closed very soon into COVID. And when, you, when the Trumbull Senior Citizen Center closed, how did you feel about that, Jonah? Um, I felt sad because I wouldn't work, work for a little while. I wouldn't have no financials no financial independence, so it's a little nerve-wracking, right? Not knowing what your future looks like. So what are some of the things that you do throughout the day that are similar or maybe different with um, this new job? We pretty much put like stuff in the, the mailing. We also like take stuff off the truck, anything, like if we get a sh ship shipment, then we put it into the room where we'll count it. Did you um, learn how to use the pallet jack? Yeah, yeah. I still want to learn how to use it. <laughs> yeah, you want to get a little bit, a little bit more experience with it. Yeah. Yeah. I like it here better. What do you think you like about it more here? Because I can interact with people, and I can work with people that I like. Because like, after Trumbull Senior and I was pretty much working by myself. Yeah. And that's a really awesome thing. Yeah. Since the beginning of COVID, when it was just the three CE managers and Janelle working on this project, we now have eight employees and we're growing quickly. One of the other cool things about providing job opportunities for someone like Jonah is the ability for him to learn new skills and to develop as an employee. He's learning things every day that, that he can apply to a future job or grow throughout the Kennedy Center itself. I've seen myself doing a lot of stuff from a year to a future from now, like like getting uh, my own house, 
I'm getting my driver license, going to school, and saving money. And building muscle too, right? Uh, yeah. And muscles too. <laughs> Hi, I'm Linda Crystal, Vice President of Business Enterprises. Thank you, Devin and Jonah, for speaking to us about your experience with the Distribution Center. It's much appreciated. The commitment of the Kennedy Center's social enterprises goes back almost 35 years to 1986 when we opened a restaurant in downtown Bridgeport. That restaurant served a local area and was a go-to place for lunch during that period of time. In the late 1980s, we developed both a uh, stamps and stuff business and a Ken Clean janitorial business. That janitorial business today um, operates over 31 locations and has an annual budget of $900,000. In the late 1990s, we developed a landscaping business called Cutting Edge, and that business continues to uh, operate today with numerous customers throughout Fairfield County. In the year 2013, we moved our stamps and stuff business to Kendock and began to utilize scanning and shredding as our primary source of business for that location. In the year 2019, we worked with our auxiliary to move over a business called um, the nearly new shop to our uh, operation and in 2020 we moved to Shelton and renamed it Palm and Abel. Palm and Abel is a honor to our founder Evelyn Kennedy and um, the word Palm is associated with her address where uh, she and a group of parents met to develop um, the beginnings of the agency at Palm Street. And Abel is to remind all of us that each and every one of us is capable of doing anything we desire and should not be held back. Back up to March of 2020, and this was a time when COVID-19 first hit our country. Um, our president and CEO, uh, Rick Sebastian, worked with a women-owned business to bring in PPE equipment to this country and supply it to both the Kennedy Center and local not-for-profits. Today, we operate a warehouse distribution center for PPE equipment, and I'm standing in our warehouse. And so far, we have supplied over $1.1 million of PPE equipment to the local area. Today, our commitment to social enterprises is the same as it was 35 years ago. We look to support and place people with disabilities and other barriers into employment and to create fiscal sustainability for our company. We look forward to many more years to come with our social enterprises. Wow, did you know all that stuff about the Kennedy Center? It's one of the reasons that your donations are so important. We've made it easy for you. Just press donate on your screen. Okay, I know you're really gonna get a kick out of this. Debuting live from Palm and Abel in Shelton, Connecticut, here's my co-host Teresa with Jen, Michael, and Kelly, the KC Trio, singing their rendition of a popular Duke Ellington song. Take it away. Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm here with my crew, Jennifer Morin, Michael Donahue, and Kelly De La Goya. Are you guys ready? Yes, ready. We're ready to sing for KC. Yeah. Cue that music. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Turn it up. Ooh, you like that? What good is music? What good is melody? If you ain't giving a little more to make it sweet. It ain't the music, no, not the melody. It's what you give that makes that tune complete. So it ain't everything when you give a little something. Come on! Do I, do I, do I, do I, do I, do I, do I? Giving to up 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 makes no difference if your gift is big or small. We appreciate that you're answering the call. We're ready to swing. We're so grateful for everything. Come on, to up to up to up to up to up to up. Oh, we're ready to swing. 
we're gonna give everything to our, to our, to our, to our, to our. Take it away, Kelly! Hey, Jenny! I know for you. Let me hear you, Mikey. Ah! Makes no difference if it's sweet or hot. We're just asking you to give it all you got. We're asking you today to give a little away. To our, to our, to our, to our, to our, to our. To our. That was fabulous. Okay, I just checked the big board and I see some of you have been having so much fun that you haven't had a chance to donate yet or buy more chances to win. So I'm gonna give you that opportunity while we queue up this next piece. Over the past eight months, we have discovered the important role technology is playing in the center's ability to thrive and keep us all connected. With that in mind, Here's Robin, Leah, and Vice President Valerie Ryer to talk about virtual programming. Hi, my name is Robin Allen, and I am an expressive arts facilitator, bringing our individuals music and movement and experiences uh, throughout the Kennedy Center, and I have had the pleasure to start working with Leah. Hi, my name is Leah Palmer, and I am involved at this Kennedy Center so many years, and uh, I'm teaching sign language for a very long time, and I also am on the board of member. Uh, this year is my fourth year, and I feel happy to work with Robin Helen. When this first started, when COVID first hit, I just had this just pit in my stomach that how are all our individuals going to function? How are they going to get through the day without their routine, without the people that they're used to being with, without their soulmates and friends and staff? And so, I started creating this program called Sing Along, uh, where I would just uh, invite people onto Zoom and we started doing singing. And it's not just a program of me singing. It's getting our individuals to connect with the people that they spent so many years with. And the wonderful thing is, when we're on Zoom, we can spotlight people and they can see their friends and it's just it really it makes me cry it just warms my heart and um, it's just been an amazing thing and it has grown and now you know we don't just do the music we have people coming on and sharing their musical abilities we have singers we have musicians uh, we had Javier Colon come on we have uh, you know now we have Leah doing sign language so here I am wanted to help people teach me how to do sign language. When I started teaching sign, um, it's a basic. And you do like ABCs first and numbers. Um, you say hi, how are you? Is it nice to meet you? And I teach them how um, like about the weather. And say, like, oh, today is sunny day. I, I do mm -hmm. signing with for that. And what made you decide to do this? Because the uncle I, mm -hmm. I want to be a teacher, teacher, everybody else. So it's been a big learning curve for all of us. We have to keep it going. And we, you know, we don't know what's gonna happen in the future and keep our virtual programs going to keep our individuals connected. And the wonderful thing also is that I see people, I see families, I see parents on Zoom with them participating in, my, in our programs. Um, staff is starting to participate in the programs. Um, when we do dancing, I see the parents coming and, to, and coming and dancing with their 
with their kids, and that's just a really wonderful thing. Hi, I'm Valerie Ryer, Vice President of Employment and Compliance. As you've just heard from Robin and Leah, we have had to transition over the past 10 months into a new format of programming that offers opportunity for individuals that we serve. March 2020, as you all know, COVID hit, and it changed the way we did our services. We rely on that face-to-face -face interaction. We do things in person. It's the human nature of what we do. We all had to make an adjustment. How do we support individuals during a time where we can't be with individuals? There are so many different platforms out there that allow us to connect virtually, but we still didn't realize the impact it was going to have on our day-to-day -day services. But then we started also doing broad-based programming. Broad-based programming allowed us to set up curriculums, offer different activities, and small group formats over the internet using the Zoom platform. Some staff interact with the persons they support by doing one-on-one -on -one phone calls, virtual meetings to do online job applications, talk about the interviewing process, and ways for them to secure employment. We are also providing virtual experiences for our seniors, veterans, and other individuals that want to learn about public transit systems. On the day programming side, we offer over 30 hours of virtual programming over the course of a week. We have a variety of options available to interest the individuals that we are serving. What we feel would help be beneficial in continuing their programming options that they would have had should they have been coming to the day program. Since April, we have had over 48,000 virtual touches with our participants and over 30,000 hours of meetings and programs. We continue to provide these services in a dual format. With the reopening of the state of Connecticut, we have brought back some of our individuals into day programming, those that really need to have that face-to-face -face connection. And then for those that are able to benefit from the virtual opportunities, we continue to offer that as an option as well. By doing these dual programming services, we are expanding the options that all individuals have while keeping people as safe as possible during these very unprecedented times. We never expected COVID to happen, and we certainly didn't expect it to last this long. Having these technology resources that we are able to utilize any given day, anywhere around our communities, certainly benefits our staff and the persons that we serve and the community at large. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts, and we continue to hope that we are partners as we look at the bright future we have ahead. Wow, I can tell you firsthand that I have worked with Robin and Leah has taught me some signing that I've always wanted to learn. And I can see the connection and the engagement in all of these consumers' eyes. They're knowing that they're in a place just for them where they can have a blast. You really should check out the programming yourself. Uh, speaking of that, you can never say thank you enough. So here's a special video, a special thank you video from our KC family. Thank you, Kennedy Center, for, for this opportunity to work in the warehouse. I am so grateful to have this awesome job. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to say thank you for, to the Kennedy Center for this wonderful opportunity for letting me work with the PPE distribution and everything. I love my job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say thank you to the Kennedy Center for letting me take the opportunity to work at Palm and Evil. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for everybody. Thank you for ma, 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 ma. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all you guys. Thank you all of us. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of all of us here at the Kennedy Center, thank you very much for your continued support and funding to keep our mission going. Thank you. 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 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Kennedy Center Gal. Good night. Okay, do I hear a drum roll, John? I think I do. Okay, you know what that means? You know what that means? Everybody, it's time. It's time Hi. to announce. That's right, Jen. It's time Hi. to announce the winners of this gorgeous wine chest and our fabulous grand prize. And I'm going to ask my friend Michael Donahue, hey Mike, how are you, to come and draw the first winner of this evening for this wine chest. Come on over, Mikey. Stick your hand in there and see who it is. Wow, that was easy. Oh, you have to be kidding me. Are you ready for this, ladies and gentlemen? The winner of this fabulous wine chest is none other than Rick Sebastian. I want a recall. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. He will probably donate it back, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, John, you're up, buddy. Okay. Jen, you ready? Yes. All right. Who shall it be? Boo, 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 boo. This is for the mixed total fitness bike. All right, John. Who is it? Who is it, Jen? Sue? Sue? Susan, Susan Peter. What? Give her Evanson. Wow. The Evanson. Wow! All right. Congratulations. Oh man. Oh, they're gonna enjoy that. And listen, I hate to say this, but it's actually time to go, John. No. Yes, it's time to go. But please, everyone, please do not forget this gem called the Kennedy Center. Thank you to all of our outstanding sponsors. Hey, thank you for coming. Yes, and I want to really thank my most magnificent host, co-host, John Jones. Yeah. Thank you, Teresa. <laughs> I've had a pleasure with you this evening. I just got information yes. that Mr. Sebastian would like to have a redraw. What? On I was his only 45 joking. bottles of wine. <laughs> what? Why? Uh-oh. Okay, here we go then. Mike, you ready? Okay, let me stir it up there. Good My name job, should Mike. be on the top. Okay. <laughs> Come on, Mike. Come All on right, Mike. here we go. Oh, no, stop. It's Rick Sebastian again. <laughs> okay. I think that constitutes one more. One more, one more. Real quick, real quick. Let me uh, do this. Oh, How much did Rick donate? Yeah, he must have donated a lot. Here we go, Mikey. Come on, pick a winner, Mikey. Okay, okay, okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the wine chest tonight is Jessica McMullen. All right, all right. Congratulations, Jessica. Congratulations, and thank you, everyone. As I said, I want to thank... Uh, all of our sponsors and John, I've really had a ball. Thank you, John. I had a and blast with John. everybody. <laughs> and, John, and That's right. Thank you, Jen and Mike. Yes. And thank you, Teresa. Hey, I had a wonderful you? time too. And it's with gratitude that we once again thank our sponsors for this evening. Without you, we couldn't have done this. That's true. And, and for two. That's right. And remember. Just because the celebration is ending, the giving never does. Hopefully you'll stick around because we have a special video as we close the celebration. <laughs> and also the silent auction bidding is open until Friday Yay, the 13th. Keep so you have plenty of time to bid. Thank you so much. Sincere thanks. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Say goodbye. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Like to be.